Welcome to the Canoga Park Youth Arts Center's new series, Inspired by Spring, where each class will look at what makes spring spring and will make some art about it. Well, the first thing that comes to most people's mind is flowers, flowers, flowers. So maybe you have some in your garden, you wanna cut some, put them in a vase. A bouquet of flowers in a vase has been a big part of art for a long time. It's called a still life where artists would set up objects and paint them. And flowers and vases were one of the main things they did. Let's take a look at what we'll be working on today. Here's my line drawing. So you can see it's got a lot of potential to go places with paint and markers or anything else because, you know, flowers are colorful. But we've got the vase, we've got our flowers, we have a tabletop, and my, ta my vase is not teetering on the edge of my table. It's down a little bit further. But we'll take a closer look at that in a minute. Let's take a look at some other bouquets of flowers. This lovely painting is by Renoir. And you can tell we've got some little flowers on the table here. There's usually some sort of table. And look, see, his isn't sitting on the edge. It's right in the middle of the table. He's got this whole cascading thing of flowers going on. Now your background is important, and we'll talk about that later on. Let's take a look at this one. Here's somebody who was inspired by those big flowing uh, flower arrangements. It looks like they put some greenery in that, which is important to remember. Your plants need leaves. Without the leaves, they can't live. Let's look at this exploding batch of color here. We have three vases. The clear ones are a little harder, so when you're starting, you might want to go with a colored one. Huge bouquet of flowers. And then we have this lovely light blue background. So when it comes to vases, look at all these shapes. And I want to tell you something about these shapes. First of all, one side has to match the other side. Now there are examples of vases that are asymmetrical, but we're going to go with ones that are the same on one side as they are on the other. And one trick that I use, kids, let me show you on this one. One trick that I show kids on how to draw a vase to look round is my smile, smile, frown trick. So the bottom is a smile. See that? This is a little less of a smile. Smile. Smile at the top here, but then a frown. I can demonstrate it better for you guys on this one. Smile. Smile. Frown. Do you see what happens when we do that? We're creating the inside where the flowers are coming up, and we're also helping to show that this vase is round. Let's go back and I just want to point out a couple things about my drawing. First of all, no two flowers are alike. Even if they're the same flower, they're not alike. So I drew some standard flowers that are easy so that you can have a variety in your bouquet. I have your standard daisy. I got a little tulip here. Tulips often drape down. I don't know why, but every bouquet of tulips I have, there's always one that does this. This is a type of flower that's on a stalk. They're, and they've got tinier flowers, but they go all the way up to the top. And here is a simple way of doing a rose. Everyone likes to draw a rose, but unfortunately to draw a rose is really complicated. So here's kind of my little system of drawing a spiral on the top and then draw the bottom part of the rose. Notice that they all have leaves. All my plants have leaves. Notice that there's a couple of them down here on the ground that have fallen off my daisy. Notice my horizon line and that my vase falls below that. And the smile, smile, frown. But remember, if you want to put a stripe on it, it has to be a smile too. If you just make a straight line across your vase, you're making more like a juice pack. You know, the squeeze juice packs, and we're not. We're making a round vase. So this has got to have a smile, and that's going to have a smile. I'm going to show you real quickly here how to make a couple of different vases, step by steps. You'll see how easy they are two lines that are the same. Look, and these, this face is going to look different, and this face is going to look different. Now I'm putting in my first smile. Smile, smile, smile. In this row, I'm putting in my second smile. Smile, smile, smile. And in the last row, I'm putting my frowns. Frown, frown, and frown. So you can see how we build it up to where it starts to look like a round base. And then I just put a stripe on it to reassure everyone this is really a round cylinder of a vase. All right, I think we're ready to start. 
I'm going to use a vertical format for my drawing. That means my paper goes this way. That's horizontal landscape. This is vertical or often called portrait. The first thing I'm going to do is lightly draw my table line. Now a table line is kind of like a horizon line, right? Because there's not every, there's like, it divides the wall from where everything is happening. So I lightly drew my tabletop in. Now I'm going to draw the two lines of the shape of the vase that I want. So I'm going to start with one line. Maybe I want a couple of bumps in it. So now what I have to do is I have to go on this side and I have to try the best I can to match those lines. And I'm coming around and putting in my first smile. Normally I would stop there and this is our first smile. So smile number one, smile number two, and frown. So you can see I've made a round vase. And to make that clear to everybody, I'm even going to put a stripe in here. So there's my first smile, my second smile, and then if I wanted to, I could put like decorations in there, anything I want. All right, so now I'm going to draw this little, now that I know where my vase is, there's my tabletop, time for flowers. So I'm going to have one drooping down. I'm just drawing the stems now. A couple of them going up here. Notice how my stems are a little fatter at the bottom. They're also not all the same size. Important that they come in different heights, you know? They're not all just stuck at the top. All right, for my tulip, it's like a cup. If we turned it this way, right? Doesn't it look like a cup? So the first step is to draw a cup. And then I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna make my first petal like that. And then this guy, that's my second petal, but look, he doesn't come all the way down because he's overlapped. And then I have this last part of my tulip. So there's my tulip. Now the daisy, this is the one you guys usually draw. Here's the center of my daisy. And we just do skinny, long petals. They don't have to be the same. They can all be a little bit different. So there's flower number two. All right, now flower number three is gonna be one of those, like a stalk. So I'm gonna put a couple little things out like this just to show where my flowers are gonna go. And now I'm just gonna draw crazy shapes. Maybe I want one in the middle. Maybe I want another one up here. But one thing I want you to see is that I go up, my circles got smaller, didn't they? Because when a flower blooms like this, these are the first ones that bloom and those are the last one. So the ones on the bottom of the stalk are gonna be bigger than the ones at the top of the stalk. And our last flower is the rose. Start with a squatted down spiral. Kinda of looks like our galaxy in a way, doesn't it? So, now I'm gonna make this like cup thing, just like the last one, a little cup thing. You guys recognize that. Now there's something that roses have that if you add, it really makes them look more like a rose. One is the hip. There's a thing called rose hip tea. It's very high in vitamin C. That is where it comes from, the hip of the rose. And then roses often have these little leaves that are bordering its, its bud. And that makes it look more like a uh, rose too. Now we need our, our leaves. Now I happen to know what kind of leaves a tulip has. They've got really long leaves and sometimes they bend like that. We're just gonna put any kind of leaf we want on our little daisy girl. And for variety, let's put tiny little leaves on our stalk flower. So we're just gonna put little leaves coming up along the way. And our rose, I do know what kind of leaves come on our rose. They look like this. They come off and stop. They have three leaves, leaf number one, leaf number two, leaf number three. Let's put another one over here. Leaf number one, leaf number two, leaf number three. Oh, and what are those? Yes. They are the thorns. So there you go. That is how we could draw a vase of flowers, otherwise known as a still life. Well, you know flowers are full of color, and I'm a, I love color. I admit it, I love color. Although everything in my closet is black and white, I love color. So I did two samples for you today. Sample number one, I used oil pastel and watercolor. And I want to point out something to you. Oh, goodness gracious. That side of the vase is a little on the darker side than this side. 
Is that because the vase is painted darker on that side? No, that's because there's a little tiny bit of a shadow happening on this side of my vase. And I want you to notice I used oil pastel to put some texture in. Ooh, I forgot to paint my flowers. So I have a little bit of texture on my table. I used the oil pastel to outline, and then I just colored it in. Remember, when you color over oil pastel, it's not gonna show. Now here's your second upgrade. You know, backgrounds can be boring to color in, and even though we should really pay attention to our backgrounds, one way out of this is to try a different color paper. And if you have oil pastels, black paper rules. But I'll give you a hint. You need to remember the magic color. Magic color is white. Without white, this yellow starts to look lime and green because black is made by using blue and brown. So when I put yellow on top of blue, I get green, right? So, but if you add some white to that, now you have a yellow flower. I went through and I added a lot of white to that, picked it up. I added white to this side of the vase and I added dark black to that side. The inside of my vase is a little darker as well, and I used a bunch of different colors on my table. I also did the cast shadow. So if the sun is coming from here, this side of my vase is dark, and it's casting a shadow. So cool, we learned how to draw flowers today. Go out and pick yourself a vase. They brighten up any room. Thank you for joining us for our lesson about Inspired About Spring, and I'll see you again. Thank you.